Good morning and welcome back to our Bison studio for the second installment of the Road to Reopening FLB Schools. I am Rick Emmerich, Superintendent here at the Fort LaBeouf School District. And with me again today is Dr. Sean Wolfram, our Assistant Superintendent. In today's segment, Dr. Wolfram and I will be covering two topics that have appeared frequently within our conversations with families that have submitted questions via our online portal. Again, our hope for today, as well as in future video seg sessions throughout the summer, is that we provide information that is helpful for families to further understand the parameters and the details associated with bringing our students back to school for the fall of 2020. First, Dr. Wolfram will provide additional information related to our newly developed FLB Cyber Academy. Secondly, I will cover our district's procedures should, should a student or staff member exhibit symptoms of illness during the school day. At the same time, I will detail the steps our team will take should we uncover a confirmed case of COVID-19 within our school buildings. Dr. Wolfram. Thank you, Mr. Emmerich. I'm going to talk a little bit more about our FLB Cyber Academy to answer some of those questions that we've been receiving. First, we know that many of our students and families are choosing the uh, traditional brick and mortar pathway, which is exciting. But we also know that we have a great number of students who are also choosing the FLB Cyber Academy. That could be for a number of reasons, whether that be an underlying illness that a student may have or someone at home who has underlying conditions as well. Again, the cyber pathway is going to enable students to stay home and complete all of their classes online. Now, something important to note is that our level of rigor is going to be much different than it was in the spring during our COVID online teaching. We will be going back to our traditional grading scale. There will be assignments that will have due dates, tests and quizzes and reports and all those sorts of things that will be resuming to normal. That level of rigor is going to go back to what we had prior to March 13th. Students will not be expected to come here to our brick and mortar buildings. Again, all of their schooling will be done online using a Chromebook. Our platform will be the Google Classroom as it was this previous spring. We've also added some enhancements, some tools to help Google Classroom be even better. An important thing to remember in our Cyber Academy is that all instructors will be FLB certified teachers. So these are going to be people that you already know. Additionally, we will provide you with all the materials that you need, such as a Chromebook or an internet hotspot if you need that as well. Any of your books or other materials, journals, supplies will all be supplied to you. At the elementary level, we will have one instructor assigned at each grade level which will handle all of those students who have signed up for the online option. They will be working with you hand in hand to make sure that we're covering the same material that we are covering here in our brick and mortar schools and to ensure that the students are progressing and learning. At the secondary level, teachers will be assigned as part of their teaching day online classes. For example, at the middle school, our teachers teach six periods each day. A teacher may have three classes that they're teaching to brick and mortar students who are here with us, and they may have a, an additional three classes of online students that they're responsible for. A popular question that has come into us is that, are students able to move back and forth between the brick and mortar option and our cyber academy? The answer to that is yes. We understand and we wanna be flexible and work with our families for whatever reason. The only thing that we want to try to do is to make sure, if possible, that we make those transitions during natural break periods, such as the mid nine weeks or at the end of the nine weeks. Now, again, we understand that might not be possible and we'll be flexible, but that is our goal going into this. The second question that's, that's often asked is, what exactly is my student's day gonna look like uh, if they choose this online option? Are they gonna need to sit in front of the Chromebook from eight in the morning until 2.30 at night as if they were in a traditional brick and mortar school? The answer to that question is no. There will be times, of course, that teachers will want the students to log in for a live session or to complete some sort of an assignment at a certain time, but there will also be flexibility. There'll be pre-recorded lectures or instruction that the students will be able to access at home, maybe in the evening when a parent is there to maybe provide some assistance, but again, 
it's not going to be sitting in front of the Chromebook from eight in the morning until three in the afternoon, like you were in a uh, traditional brick and mortar building. Mr. Emmerich is going to now talk about how we're gonna handle if we have uh, cases of COVID here at school. Thank you, Dr. Wolfram. In their most recent guidance, the American Association of Pediatrics strongly advocates that all policy considerations for the opening of the school year should start with a goal of having students physically present in our schools. As our families are aware, our district is intending to pursue this course, but as all of us may expect, challenges are coming about that must be overcome in order for us to ensure the safety and health of our students as we come back in the fall. Although no single action or set of actions will completely eliminate, eliminate the risk of COVID-19, medical guidance tells us that the implementation of several coordinated interventions that our team intends to pursue will greatly reduce that risk. In any case, effective communication between our parents in each school building, particularly our school nurses, will be vital. Now more than ever, everyone in our school community must work together to safely get our students engaged in academics and reconnected with their peers in a school setting. That stated, two questions that are frequently presented from our families. Number one, what happens if a student becomes symptomatic during the school day? And number two, what if a student or staff member tests positive for COVID-19? A student exhibiting symptoms during the school day will be excused from the classroom and directed to immediately report to the nurse. In an exam room that is separate from our traditional school nurse's office and away from mainstream tra traffic in the building, our school nurses will assess each student, including a temperature check and a list of questions about any pre-existing conditions that may explain their symptoms. If the assessment of the student warrants, the school nurse will contact a parent or guardian to arrange for transportation home. Please note that all students with a fever, regardless of cause, will likely leave the school building as soon as possible. Parents picking up their child will be directed by our school nurses to immediately contact their primary care physician for further medical evaluation. Upon evaluation, the physician may determine the cause of illness is not related to COVID-19 or they may refer a student for further testing for COVID-19. In either case, the student will not be able to return to school without written medical clearance from a licensed physician. After departure a student, of a student from a classroom, the student desk and work area will be sanitized prior to any further use of that space. The school will continue to operate normally, as normally as possible, until additional information becomes available on the student's status. As parents, we know there are many common causes other than COVID-19 that could explain someone not feeling well at any particular time during the school day. There could also be an incident where our school receives notification from a parent or the Erie County Health Department that a student or staff member here at FLB is a confirmed case of COVID-19. As part of all COVID-19 case investigations, information will be quickly obtained from the student or staff member as their close contacts as to their close contacts when their symptoms became prevalent. Again, close contact is we're hearing through several medical professionals is anyone who has been within six feet of an infected person for at least 15 minutes, starting from two days before the person began feeling sick until the time the patient was isolated. The actual nature of close contacts will be explored in detail by trained school professionals, as well as the Erie County Health Department. Multiple variables, such as was the individual symptomatic during school or did the case develop or the illness develop at home will be considered. Once all information has been gathered, students and staff who are considered to be close contacts, if any, will be notified of their exposure using as little identifying information about the case as possible. Following a positive test with written clearance from the health department 
or the student and staff or staff member's position. A symptomatic student or staff member can return 10 days from the symptoms onset, inclusive of 72 hours without a fever. One of the common misconceptions is that classrooms or schools must be shut down for extended periods of time if there is a confirmed case of COVID-19. Please know that this is not the current recommendation of medical professionals. Currently, the preponderance of evidence continues to suggest that children are less likely to be infected, less likely to express symptoms, and are lower risk of spreading the disease to others. That stated, we will follow all recommendations or and all mitigation procedures as planned and do everything we can to promote the health and safety of our students under these unusual conditions. Depending on the details of the confirmed case, this may involve simply conducting enhanced surveillance for signs and symptoms and increasing sanitation and hygiene in affected areas. Multiple positive cases may involve modifications to physical distancing protocols or some changes to our mask usage. As COVID-19 will likely be with us for an extended period of time, and given that all school districts across the Commonwealth will almost likely have cases, we would like to emphasize the importance of the partnership we must continue to maintain between our families and our schools. As parents, screening children before they head off to school, keeping children home when they are symptomatic, and alerting our school nurses or building principal if a child or family member has tested positive for COVID-19 will all tremendously support our shared mitigation measures we take each day in our schools. Along with that, certain allergies or chronic medical conditions may cause the same symptoms of COVID-19 in our children. In such cases, we encourage our families to communicate ahead of time with our school nurse and alert them of these conditions. By doing so, our school nurse will ensure a solid plan is in place in the event symptoms come about here at school. For example, in order to differentiate between asthma and COVID-19 related shortness of breath, when a student uses his or her inhaler, the symptoms should improve as expected. Or a student with chronic allergies having a mild cough and a runny nose, the symptoms may be explained through clear improvement by the administration of antihistamine. That is all we have for today's episode of the Road to Reopening FLB Schools. Just a reminder to our parents to take a moment to register your child via online on our enrollment survey by Monday, July 6. As always, we encourage our families to, to submit questions along the way through the FLB School Community COVID-19 question form. On behalf of myself, Dr. Wolfram, we wish everyone a safe holiday weekend. Thank you.